example, when farmers had a bad year, um, the taxpayer funded them, reimbursed them, so they were able to keep the farms going. Right. Well, uh, human beings being human beings find ways to get that money in a fraudulent fashion. And such is the case out of this uh, North Carolina. Federal investigators have unraveled, they say, a massive scheme among dozens of insurance agents, claims adjusters, brokers, and farmers in eastern North Carolina to steal at least $100 million from the government-backed program that insures crops. Authorities say the ongoing investigation is already the largest such ring uncovered in the country to date. And basically what it was is, uh, you know, people being paid, making claims, working together, <laughs> case in this case, insurance agents and farmers, saying we had a bad crop year. Insurance agents goes ahead and files, and they get all kinds of money, and they share that money. So Even this when the crop is not bad. So this money's coming from an insurance company? It's coming from the federal government. Federal government, okay. You and me. Right, so it's coming from out of the subsidies yeah. that government, okay, gotcha. Exactly. And there are many, many people involved. And it's it's been going on for years. In fact, last year, a lot of people may not know that we, the taxpayer, dished out $15.6 billion in crop insurance funds to farmers. Now- a lot of it's legitimate. I'm sure. Bad yeah. years. Right, corn, right. soybean, Droughts, whatever the case floods, may be. whatever. Yeah, all mm-hmm. that sort of thing. But fraud is huge, and this is not the only case, but it's the biggest case yet. So we're going to keep an eye on that. So who tracks that, I wonder? Department of Agriculture, I Department guess? Department of Agriculture has yeah. to investigate these kinds of things, but it's a huge program. Yeah. Millions yeah, of dollars. Huge. Yep. Now, fraud, the second story, deals with uh, voter fraud. Yesterday in we Ohio, voter, we have voter fraud. We We're have voter America? fraud. Yeah, we don't need those voter ID laws. Right, <laughs> they're they're just terrible. We don't need those right, things. Right. Well, apparently in parts of Ohio, we do. Yesterday, a 58-year-old veteran Cincinnati poll worker facing eight counts now of voter fraud. Meloise Richardson, been a poll worker for the Democrats for years now. Initially, this story broke back a few weeks ago where she admitted she voted twice. Right, I remember She that. said no big deal. But in fact, she voted at least eight times. <clears throat> Richardson admitted on camera to local TV station, yes, I voted twice, claiming she was concerned that her vote would not count. She also said there was no intent on my part to commit any voter fraud. Okay. Do we need an education about voter fraud, perhaps? <laughs> She went on to say, I'll fight for Mr. Obama and Mr. Obama's right to sit as president of the United States. So now it's a right. You don't have to get elected. You just just write, and I have a right to vote for him as many times as I can. Mm-hmm. So anyway, she's been indicted. But also, a Roman Catholic nun has been charged. In this case, it was Sister Marguerite Clouse, also facing one count of illegal voting for allegedly submitting an absentee ballot in the name of a fellow nun, Sister Rosemary Hewitt, who had died before absentee ballots were sent out. She's accused of opening Sister Hewitt's ballot, forging her signature, and mailing it to the Board of Elections as a vote. Clues has resigned as the Dean of the Division of Arts and Humanities at the College of Mount St. Joseph in Cincinnati, where she still serves as an Associate Professor of Religious and Pastoral Studies. Hmm. Didn't have a problem with voting for this individual. All right. Uh, Yesterday, uh, Mayor Bloomberg of New York suffering a setback. A judge there, state Supreme Court judge there, said no to this whole idea of new regulations, which were supposed to kick in today, the so-called soda ban. Yeah. You know, banning uh, large sugary drinks larger than 16 ounces was supposed to kick in today, but the judge said, no way, you can't do that. And for a couple of reasons, he said, now, this was going to go, this law was going after street stands, you know, sell hot dogs and Cokes and stuff like that, or restaurants. However, because stores like 7 Eleven and others aren't under the local board of health, the rules didn't apply to them. So you could get your hot dog at the stand and then go to the 7 Eleven next door and get your in excess of 16 ounces there. So the judge said you can't have a law that discriminates that way, uh, for one thing. So uh, Justice, yes, uh, Supreme Court Justice Milton Tingling in Manhattan zeroed in on the loopholes, noting what, noting it would only have applied to businesses that are under the purview of the health department, like restaurants. 
He said it is arbitrary and capricious because it applies to some but not all food establishments in the city. It excludes other beverages that have significantly higher concentrations of sugar sweeteners and or calories of suspect grounds, and the loopholes inherent in the rule serve to put or gut the purpose of the rule. He also expressed concern that to allow the health board such sweeping authority would eviscerate the separation of powers between the executive and the legislative branches of city government. So, Mayor Bloomberg's first attempt at uh, nanny state. Now, it's gone beyond that. He's also had regulations in other areas. But this had the the food industry upset. It had the beverage uh, industry upset. Uh, They all joined hands and went to court on this. And it sounds like at least they found one state Supreme Court judge that doesn't agree with the whole idea of a, a nanny state. Will they appeal? Oh, Bloomberg has already been on television oh, okay. last night saying he's going to appeal. He's, you know, for the greater good. And this is a battle we're facing not only in New York right now, but across the country. We have a nanny state mentality yeah, that's, that's sure. developing the federal government, you know, school lunch programs. We did a story in the last couple of weeks. Of course, the Fed's dictating now what can be on the tray in our school lunch programs. And they say you must have an apple or an orange. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the thing is, you can put the apple or orange on the tray, but you can't make the kids eat. And there have been stories about just the millions of dollars of losses in food because these kids take the apples and they play basketball. You know, they throw it in the right. garbage can. And so there you have it once again. You know, it, it's, it's a government assuming they can make people do things like eat certain foods and all that sort of thing. And people are just going to get their backups out of it. I read this morning that uh, California is... Uh trying to institute a ban on lead bullets in the Mm -hmm. state of California. Yeah. So that, you know, again, uh, a way of using an EPA kind of rule or law Mm -hmm. um, to, you know, ban certain ammunition sales, which are going to dramatically impact, um, you know, that industry as they're trying to do. No question about it. Well, Well, much more ahead uh, with regards to news today. I think you may have been already talking about the Republicans, Paul Ryan, going to issue their budget today. Yes, I've been talking about that. And uh, going after Obamacare on that front because, uh, and even the Washington Post, I was reading something this morning, there's been some disputing between Democrats and Republicans over the fact that Obamacare is going to mean a trillion dollars in new taxes. Right. Now, the Democrats were saying that's not true, but even the Washington Post caught them in a lie on that. There is going to be a trillion dollars of new taxes. Now, it's spread out, I think, between now and, what is it, 2022, Mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, But we're all going to be hit with it. And Obamacare is going to cost us all more money in taxes, but also in greater premiums. Well, you know, Fred, I I said this earlier. I I said it yesterday, and I I said it about six months ago. I believe that Obamacare is going to be... <clears throat> the uh, demise of the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, they talk about, you know, the demise of the Republican Party. Let me tell you, and I, and I said this this morning to any Democratic congressman that was listening, probably none, but <laughs> if they were, I said it anyway, um, you might as well start looking for a real job mm-hmm. because you may get in November 2014. Mm-hmm. 2016, you've got no shot because any Democrat opponent that you run against all they have to say is i would not have voted for obamacare i didn't vote for obamacare Mm -hmm. and you did Mm -hmm. and it they're they're done Mm -hmm. i mean i believe it's going to dramatically change the democratic party if it's if it stays intact and i read an article this morning uh in uh i I, uh, i'm looking for it i think it was uh politico but i read an article this morning talking about um yeah it was politico talking about um, the obstacles in 2014 for President Obama and the Democrats. And it's basically saying that Democratic candidates have already begun to distance themselves mm-hmm. from President Obama mm-hmm. because of the, the uh, 2014, November 2014 Absolutely. elections. Yep. And, you know, they right now they're all wishing they had read the bill and mm-hmm. understood it, mm-hmm. but they can't run from this. No. Nope. They're not going to be able to run from it. No. Nope. And I think, that if if there's an opportunity to get support in the House anyway yeah. for Ryan's bill, mm-hmm. it, it, they could get some Democrats 
to sign on and actually get the Paul Ryan budget approved. Now, it's not going to it's not going to even get to the floor of the Senate. Mm-hmm. And if it did and won, it's going to get vetoed by the president. So I'm not hopeful no. that this but it's going to start a debate mm-hmm. uh, that and an exposure yes. to Democrats mm-hmm. that they're not going to like much. Oh, so, absolutely. So uh, that's a step in the right direction. Well, we said when we were covering uh, Obamacare when it was a bill going through that watch out the front end was was really friendly uh you could get to keep your kids up to 26 years of age on your plan all those goodies right, were in right, the front right, end right to get them through uh this last election but now all the bad stuff kicks in and the bad stuff is not only taxes the bad stuff is also those review panels that are going to be out there deciding what operations you're going to get yeah, exactly. who's going to pay for what all of these sorts of things that conservatives warned folks about and the other side said no that's nonsense don't worry about that and most people most americans didn't read a 2000 page bill and they still don't know but they will find out dan when these taxes start kicking in they will find out when they have to go for that hip replacement or what a knee replacement whatever the case may be and the insurance company says no we're not going to do that or this panel that See, what's going to happen, and we've talked about this before, you look at Britain, you look at Canada, you look at these other places. What happens is because of this great expansion of eligibility to be part of the plan, but no new money, really, because it's so expensive, that uh, the money begins to shrink. And when the money begins to shrink, that's when those panels start kicking in and saying, no, we're not going to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. That's when people, when you take grandma to the... To the, to the doctor's office, and they say, we may be able to do it for you, but it's going to be six months for that cataract surgery. That's when it's all going to kick in. That's when people are going to get really angry, mm-hmm. and that's going to be happening over the next couple of years. It is, and that's why I say if it's not 2014 elections, yeah. it's definitely going to be 2016. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so try as they may to destroy the Republican Party or conservatives, uh, they are they are in a uh, on a dis- self destructive course that they created and are not going to be able to run from. Yep. Fred Jackson, our news director at uh, American Family News, appreciate you, Fred. Thanks for coming in. Good to be here. We're going to go to break.